You're listening to the Cricket Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cricket Podcast. Uh, in this segment, we're going to be naming our old man 11. Um, I've got some some great names on my list, Max and, and Ross. I'm sure you've got some good names on yours too. Before we get into that, though, make sure you head over to our social media channels on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we're there at the Cricket Pod. Uh, hit like and subscribe, or follow and subscribe, whatever it is. Uh, well, hit subscribe on, on YouTube. Hit subscribe on Spotify across all formats. Like I said. Um, and if you want to head over to Patreon and support the show with your wallet, you can. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash the cricket pod. Uh, we're trying to get to 10 Patreons. We're on eight. It's going well. Could go better. Uh, we could get to 10. And then, as we said much earlier in the show, 501 is the next target. Uh, so small steps. <laughs> Fellas. <laughs> The old man 11. Max, 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 how are we going to do this? Uh, yes, well, as uh, as we've we've teased it, haven't we, for, for a little while with the, the mention of Darren Stevens and the county championship. And this is, I think, what uh, his long and storied career really is all led up to this this moment, this <laughs> Hall of Fame epic that is the cricket podcast selecting uh, 11 people who uh, are or seem to be old to play cricket. <laughs> Um, we are going to uh, reprise what we did uh, last time out with the World Test Championship eleven. So we will take it in turns to to name our cricketers. But we've uh, we've gone for a few different um, uh, different ways of looking at, at the old cricketer, uh, and and we split those up between us. So Jack is taking on the the old time old timers. So that's uh, people who. Uh, are now retired but played cricket into their uh, into their later years. I um I'm taking on people who aren't necessarily old or weren't necessarily old when they played cricket but looks like they were really old and uh, and Ross has has got the uh, the contemporary set of of old timers. Um and we will take it in turn. Love how your yeah. section is uh, the players that look old. Yeah. Um well there are there look there are some guys out there aren't there like Chris in our cricket team. Who nobody knows their age. They look old. They could be thirty. They could be forty. They look sixty. Yeah, and, and, and that applies to cricketers. And I will be so sharing. Old. I'll be sharing three of my observations on that front. Uh, we've got three each, which, as the as I'm sure you will, listener, uh, you will have noticed, makes nine, uh, which is too short of a cricket team. Darren Stevens is obviously the captain of this side. Yeah, you know there is no uh, there is no arguing there, and. Um, and I had actually uh, an email just before we started from WG Grace saying that he would be uh, absolutely outraged if he wasn't uh, part of the team as the OG old bloke in uh, in cricket. And as we all know, people go to see cricket to see him play, not to see anyone else bowl. So he's he's in there as well. Um, so uh, that leaves nine spaces, three each. And uh, and Jack, you can you can kick us off with one of your old blokes. Uh, yeah, I can. I mean, like, uh, we should say as well, if you want to name your old man 11 or you want to usurp WG Grace, because we did phone that pick in a little bit, um, let us know in the comments. We'd be interested to hear who your favourite old guy is. Um, the Dom, I don't think the, the Dom, Dom Bradman. Yeah. I mean, he's dead. <laughs> anyway, um, I've, I, I've gone with a wild card to kick things off. Um this guy, really, not necessarily famous for his career. He's famous for a match. Uh, fellas, do you know who Asif Karim is? I don't actually know. No, he's, okay. He's enlightened me. So, well, if you're at home, you're you're either looking blank like these two, shouting who the hell is Asif Karim, or you're saying, oh, Jack just picked a 39-year-old insurance broker from Kenya who made it to a World Cup semi-final. Um, fellas, do you remember the 2003 World Cup? Just about. Do you remember the, that Kenya made the 2003 World Cup? Can you believe that, that Kenya, the nation of Kenya, made a cricket World Cup Well, I remember semi-final? Them, uh, I remember them being on Brian Lara Cricket, the very first PlayStation cricket of, yeah. the, of that franchise of game. And, and Kenya were in there as one of the international teams. Yeah. So... Uh... They, they got to the semi-final. They, were, they weren't eventually knocked out by India. Uh, but on their journey, um, 
the, well, I mean, the journey it was basically fantastic. So this this is why I picked Karim. Uh, he was playing in the 1919. He, in the World Cup in 1999, he was their captain. Uh, he retired from cricket, full stop, didn't play at all. In the lead up to 2003, uh, the board, they came and they begged Asif Karim to come out of retirement and, uh, well, play for the cricket team. Um, but basically because there was a big dispute in the dressing room between some people who wanted to match fix, some people who didn't want to match fix. And they, they thought if they brought Kareem back in, uh, maybe he could smooth things over. And eventually uh, Adumbe, some, one of the guys, um, was was done for match fixing. So, you know, they needed they needed a stabilising influence. And you have to say they made the semi-final, so it worked. Um, <laughs> so he went in. He hadn't played cricket since 1999 when he retired. Um he doesn't really play a lot in the group stages. I think he plays the first match, gets smacked around, gets rested. Um, Kenya go on this wild run, uh, basically because, well, New Zealand refused to go to Kenya to play the game, so they won that one. Uh, then they beat Canada, I think. Uh, then they beat Zimbabwe, I think. Then they beat Sri Lanka, so that was good. They made it through to the Super Six. Um, they had to beat someone bad in the Super Six stage, and they did. Maybe that was when they beat Zimbabwe. Then their final match of the Super Six uh, was against Australia. Now, 2003 Australia, what can you two tell me about 2003 Australia? Uh, they were pretty good, weren't they, at, at cricket? Yeah. 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 Do you want to name some names? A uh, couple, of, <laughs> couple of wars in there. I don't think war, I think the wars are gone, but Ricky gone? Ponting, yeah. Yeah, Ricky Nine. Ponting. Shane, I think, was injured for this tournament, but yeah, oh, you do really well at naming. You've named the '99 Michael World Bevan. <laughs> oh yeah. no, no, 2000, 2003. Shane, wasn't that when Shane Warne did drugs and got banned for I think you're banned right, substance? Ross. That yeah, was yeah, that, yeah, was that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Brad yeah, so we got ha- Hayden Gilchrist. You got Simon Catchett probably playing. Brett Lee, McGrath's probably ended his career. They were yeah, playing yeah. there. Darren yeah. Lehman. Anyway, so he comes on. Uh, Kenya, they bat first in this match. It's a little bit of a dead rubber. They score 174. Australia on 109 for two off 15 overs, which is pretty good. Uh, and it's absolute magic. Uh, so the first ball, Ricky Ponting edges the slip, where it's dropped. Uh, it could have, could have been better, but it was dropped. Second ball, spins it past the bat. Third ball, does it again. Does it a fourth time. Fifth ball, what does he do, Ross? Bold him. No, well, he kind of. He goes for the quicker one. It shoots on. Ricky Ponting is out LBW. In comes Darren Lehman, who, you know, contemporary sources suggest was the best player of spin in the Australian side. I don't know if that's true. It might be. Uh, he could pick Murali's Dutra, though, which is, you know, no reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can't pick Asif Karim. Two big spinning balls, one that goes straight on. Little edge caught behind. So he's got he's got Ponting and Lehman. Pretty pretty good going for a 39-year-old insurance Bramco who hasn't played cricket for four years. Uh, then comes Brad Hogg. Now, Brad Hogg, he knows uh, that Asif Karim is old and he might not be able to bend down. So what he thinks is I'm going to hit the ball back at him, but low so that maybe he doesn't get there. Uh, he does that. Asif Karim's wise to it. He's ready. His legs are spread so he doesn't have to bend down as far. He takes the return catch. And he's got three wickets. Um, at this point, Australia are 117 for five. They might lose to Kenya. Uh, so Andrew Simons and Ian Harvey, they say enough is enough and, and they block the hell out of it. So Asif Krim, his figures, they eventually read 8.2 overs, six maidens, seven runs, three wickets, uh, dismisses <laughs> Ricky Fonting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ricky Ponting, Darren Lehman, Brad Hogg. Uh, Australia will go on, uh, and our Indian listeners will remember this. They score 359 in the final. They were not mugs. This wasn't this wasn't like the 2019 era Australians, the Jokers, who lose to England and stuff. They, they absolutely crushed it. I think they went 37 matches at the World Cup without losing. Uh, retires were good at the end of the tournament. Haven't seen him since. Uh... And here Pretty... he is to join us today. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty long stuff. Asif Karim, the first old guy I'd like in our team. Uh, who's going next? Uh, so I'll go next. Um, we'll, we'll do the same order as we did last time. Slightly uh, slightly less long um, story this time, Browns. You'll be pleased to know. But this one's inspired by uh, by Ross, actually, and something that Ross said, um, I think, what, a year ago or 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 less than that, I don't know. But um, it's uh, it's Mohammed Shami. So um, he currently 
Currently he's 30 and he looks probably quite close to his age, maybe a year or two out, but the difference isn't isn't that stark. But um, that doesn't take into account the fact that he's looked about 32 for the last 10 years. And uh, while most people find their uh, appearance sort of catches up with their age post-25, uh, Shami's gone the other way and his actual age has converged towards his receding hairline. And um, and I think this is all backed up by Ross, who just came out and said he was like 35 uh, on a podcast a little while back and we had to <laughs> correct him. So um, so that's that's why Mohammed Shami's in there. And, um, you know, perhaps the good news for him is that uh, he'll still look 32 when he's 64. Who knows? That's a great pick. Uh, Ross, um, cont- who's the contemporary old guy in our old guy 11? Uh, there's one man who I... Um, so I've got a, there's a short list of about 11 people that I've got on here. Um, a lot of them looked are, up I'm, who's old on, on the Cricket Info. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there is a bit where there's, there's a man who stands out among all of these from a batting point of view. And uh, I, think, I think he's got better... Uh, he's refined his game and he is he is, a, he is a maestro of T20 cricket um, but he is also the only player to score a triplet of century so a triple hundred in tests a double hundred in ODIs and a hundred in a T20 um, and that is Christopher Henry Gale uh, I don't think you look past him in terms of kind of the T20 record that he's played he's even good at he's, he's good at all formats um, really um, but the guy has been supreme, um, especially when he puts his glasses on, wears the hat and then bowls his dirty offspin. Um, so to me, the man who's hit, what, 15,000 runs or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it, it, it was a no brainer for me for someone who's still playing. Uh, that That's a good choice. And and it balances out the team again. So we've got a batter, a, a left arm spinner. Um, I mean, some say that Akshay Patel learned everything he knows from, from uh, Asif Krim. Not many people, but some people say it. Uh, and Mohammed um, Shami. Uh, the, the, the second old, old guy uh, that I picked isn't actually that old, old. Um, it's Ed Joyce. Um, now I'm selecting him because he has accomplished a rare treble in the world of cricket. He was the nation, nation of Ireland's oldest test debutant. He's the oldest man to ever play for Ireland. Uh, in, in the same game uh, and he's the oldest man who's still alive who has played test cricket for Ireland so you know well done to him only only one other oldest man ever to play for their nation is still going I think uh, Bang- uh, Bangladeshi guy um, it wasn't the longest career one test <laughs> score the most runs 47 <laughs> Top score of 43, though. Uh, but he, he made it at the age of 39 years and 231 days. Afterwards, he basically said that he hung around for ages just to play in that match. Um, not not selfish at all. Uh, that is it. Um, <laughs> okay, so I think I, uh, did, did he, he didn't play any <laughs> test cricket for England, did he? No. So he, no, he, he did, played, he did he represent a England. Yeah, yeah, he played a few, few ODIs. He had yeah. that horrific dislocated ankle on the boundary. Well, this is this is what he said. Basically, at the end of his career, he was unable to play cricket unless he'd taken loads of quite strong painkillers in advance. So he decided to retire. He'd re- he basically was just hanging. He, he wasn't playing at all apart from for this test. Uh, and you know, you know, he got forty-seven across two innings uh, against Mohammed Amir. It's not too bad. That's what we want in the team, isn't it? A man mm-hmm. with a lot of pride who loves cricket and um, can't believe his ankles. I think he's Ireland's uh, women's coach now. So um, hmm. he gives back. He gives back he, to the Irish He gave game. back. Yeah. Max, yes. third man in. Right. Yeah. So our, our next old looking bloke who isn't necessarily old, uh, it is uh, Shahida Freedy. So uh, Shahida Freedy, you know, some people might have said he looked a bit older than he was during his career. And if they did so, they would be right because that is because he was actually five years older than everyone thought he was during his career. Or, or is he? I don't know. We don't know. He doesn't know. The uh, the ICC database claimed that he was born in 1980, and uh, the general consensus was he made his debut at the age of 16. But in a recent autobiography, he set the date of his birth at 1975 and said he was 19 on debut. Um, uh, the astute mathematicians among you may have also noticed that that doesn't add up either. But uh, oh, even close. <laughs> to further the muddy the waters, uh, you can do he, that on one hand. <laughs> yeah, to, to further muddy the waters. Recently on uh, Twitter, he claimed he was celebrating his 44th birthday this year, um, while his book would have had him at 46, and the ICC would have had him at 41. So, um, how old is Shahida Freedy? Only he knows. Except maybe he doesn't. 
Wow. Oh, Freddy is such a good, uh, a good choice. Um, uh, he's yeah. I love, I love guys like that. Uh, Carno in football was always brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> They did a they did a medical test on Carno apparently when he was playing for Portsmouth in maybe his second spell at Portsmouth. Yeah, and um, apparently you can you can work out how old someone is by how you much cut cartilage through their is worn bone away. and see how many rings there are. <laughs> no, we know from actually looking at their cartilage how much it's worn away. His cartilage wear and tear was consistent with someone who was in their late forties when he was claiming to be about thirty five. <laughs> uh, and it's good to see a three D basically being the cricket equivalent of that. Um, so I, I'm glad he's in our old man team, and he is quite old now. Whichever yeah. way you want to slice it, and, he's pretty old. He's still playing. He's still playing. I'll tell you what. He's this old that today he was ruled out of the rest of the <laughs> Pakistani Super League because he's got a bad back. Hey, that's a good reason to it's be. Genuinely in. true, though, Max. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ross, next old old guy. Um, he's taken 600 test wi- over 600 test wickets. The only person to do so. He is the ultimate master with the swinging cricket ball. Um, again, uh, opposite side of the of the picture. He's probably a genuine number eleven compared to uh, Chris Gale opening the batting. Um, it's Jimmy Anderson, the Burnley Express, uh, the one who is going to lead England to beating uh, India this summer. Um, I don't think I need to justify him. He is, he is the best seam bowler of all time. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think currently playing, he's the best old guy. And yeah. he's the old guy who gets talked about for being old the most. Yeah, that's true he, as well, yeah. You know, he, he, people are like, oh, there's James Anderson, the old guy who happens to be quite good at cricket. He should be the <laughs> most white how, yeah. so much. And how old is he going to be when he retires? Oh, I bet it will be very old. <laughs> so, he's on to his 804th wicket, the old guy. Um, <laughs> yeah, the good, good choice, Ross, and uh, very much deserving of a spot. Uh, I have gone, and this is uh, this is the classic old, old guy. I think. Well, wait, 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 can, we, can, we, can we just, wait, one second, what's our composition of the team looking like? Like, okay, okay, well, yeah, we, let's run we're through. halfway through pretty much, aren't we? So. Um, so we have Chris Gale and Ed Joyce opening the batting. Uh, WG coming in at three. Uh, Darren Stevens, depending on which part of his career, could bat somewhere between four and seven, I think. Then we've got a 3D as like the spinning all-rounder. Uh, we've got Asif Karim, who's probably going to be a mascot. <laughs> based on the strength <laughs> of this side so far. <laughs> um, uh, and, then, and we've got uh, Mohamed Shami and James Anderson as as speed, as speed bowlers. Shape it up pretty nicely. <laughs> speed bowlers. Uh, I think this is good. What would be good is we'll put it on Twitter who would win out of our well test 11 and then this team. This is good. Uh, so I've gone, this, I, like genuinely, he looks old. He was old. It happened a long time ago, back in the olden days. Uh, Brian Close. Um, now, yeah. he he was so old at the end of his test career that the se- section on his Wikipedia that talks about the end of his test career isn't even in the bit of the Wikipedia that talks about his career. It's in the later life section, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I think is incredible. Um, he, his legend, so basically Brian Close, if you don't know who he was, he was quite a good bloke from Yorkshire who played cricket for England, but also hated one day cricket, liked the apartheid government, not everyone's best friend, very Yorkshire, which is actually not a positive trait. People in Yorkshire, we all, we all <laughs> hate it. <laughs> um, he had been dropped from the England team at the age of 36 um for not being very good basically i uh, is is how i would summarize it is test batting averages below 30 although you know people say he was better than that uh i think if your test average is below 30 not very good is that all right can we say that we've yeah. we've, we've this bangladesh can we even on uncovered Bangladesh? pitches yeah I don't, and i think they were probably covered at this point anyway fast forward nine years and the west indies turn up in england tony Gregg makes the grovel comment where he, he says he's going to make the West Indians grovel. Uh, Tony Gregg, who is a South African um, from apartheid South Africa, uh, you know, obviously didn't consult the PR guys before, <laughs> before he said that. And Michael Holding, Wayne Daniel, uh, and a bunch of others uh, are out to get England. Now, 
England in this situation, there's different ways they could play it. They decide to go full England and they they reach for Brian Close. They recall a guy who is now 45 years old, hasn't played test cricket for 36, has a batting average below 30, uh, and they present him to the English public and Michael Holding as the solution. Uh, now, I'm guessing that both of you have seen the clip of uh, Michael Holding bowl hit at a helmetless old man. <laughs> like it, it looks... And at the time, the press were, were outraged. They were like, how can this be allowed like this guy's bowling 90 miles an hour uh, at a geriatric and and we're saying this is sport people thought he was going to die but to be fair to brian close he doesn't die what brian close does is that he scores 20 of 108 balls over three hours um which if you've seen any of those clips is is pretty incredible uh, at the other end there was another guy who was 40 um England, <laughs> I mean, I can't believe that England's answer to Michael Holding is uh, an 85 year old combined age opening partnership. <laughs> uh, but they, they see it out. Um, he only gets about 20, it's not great. He gets dropped after that test. But the reason Brian Price is actually in the team is because, and people don't remember this, in he came back for two tests. So he there was the old Trafford one where he gets pinged loads and you know nearly dies. But then there's one at Lords the week before where he gets 60 and 46 for an average of 53 off the same bowlers, which is actually pretty good going for a 46 year old. Um, so, or 45 year old. So, well done, Brian Close. Uh, I think, you know, we'll have less of your politics. Maybe he's not allowed to speak, some kind of rule like that in the dressing room. But we do want his steel and determination at the top of the order. Max. Well. A man with steel and determination to uh, to a man whose name is Steel. Um, there's your <laughs> there's your segue. Um, it's uh, it's David Steel who earned his first cap for for England at the um, the well the uh, the young old age of of 33. But he uh, he was close to uh, retirement apparently at the time from county cricket while he was at. Uh, North Ants, um, but was thrust into uh, a somewhat ailing England side for the second Ashes Test in 1975, and um, and this is where the story gets fun. He marked his first appearance for England by uh, going down one too many flights of stairs and getting lost in the basement toilets. Um, <laughs> that's an old man move. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's tick one tick in the old man box. Uh, fortunately, they Grandad. <laughs> yeah, fortunately he. <laughs> Found his way uh, out to the crease just in time to be uh, to avoid being the first cricketer to be timed out. Um, but his eventual arrival at the crease was met by uh, Jeff, Jeff Thompson with the question, "Bloody hell, who've we got here?" Groucho Marx, um, with his nice prematurely, yeah, <laughs> prematurely grey hair, contrastingly dark eyebrows and round glasses. It was quite an astute observation, um, <laughs> and and worthy of being included into this eleven on by virtue of a man who looks quite old, despite not being very old. Alternative descriptions uh, for sort of more, the more contemporary audience, I suppose, could be, uh, you could liken him perhaps to John Major. There's a bit of a John Major about him. I oh, think. yeah, big time John Major. Yeah, or perhaps a, a less wanky looking Jacob Rees-Mogg. You know. mm, yeah, I can see that yeah. too. Uh, um, they called him the bank clerk who went yes, to war. Yes, they did. Yes, his, his looks and gritty batting spurned that description, along with another one, which was uh, an age, aging obdurate mollusk, which is uh, uh, interesting. Interesting That's a suits corner, corner for me. Yeah, but uh, yeah, bank clerk that went to war is how he's famously known. But despite all the amusement around his selection, he actually did pretty well. He um, he scored 50 and 45 on his debut to help England to a draw and uh, and scored a century against the fearsome West Indies uh, and averaged 42 at the end of his eight tests. But uh, unfortunately, after that West Indies series, he was dropped for the next series against India under the pretense that he couldn't play spin. Um, presumably, <laughs> they pick Johnny Press. Oh, you've ruined my <laughs> jokes, you bastard! You've ruined my punchline. And um, and yeah, and he, and he didn't come back. Didn't come back to England. Yeah, <laughs> very good. Sorry, Sorry David Max. Steele. David Steele. David Steele. Uh, he was in the same side as as the as Brian Close. So we actually saw this lineup in action. Yeah, kind of. Um, and Tony Gregg, he looked pretty old as well. So. Could have just uh, picked yeah, the yeah, 1975 England team. <laughs> Ross. All oh, right. Who have I? So the final person. Yes. Yeah. Um, so oh, 
There is all kinds of different people to choose from, mainly uh, the roster of Chennai Super Kings. <laughs> um, and it, here is here is where I think I really have to pick from. And um, I know we've given him pelters over the year, well, over the last kind of year or so, for being oh, of old what lead boots, um, kind of being scared to go and bat. Uh, his eyesight being he's, ultimately, I think I have to pick Mahindra Singh Dhoni in this space. Um, for his career across um, kind of uh, his, oh, his Indian captaincy career, great glove burn, uh, great batsman, won them the World Cup where he um, pushed himself up the order. Um, it's just unfortunate that when you get to that old age, you, you do deteriorate. Um, and that's what we're seeing right now. But never Not mind. If you're Darren Stevens. Yeah. <laughs> but that is true. Yeah. Maybe Darren Stevens and Dhoni should have a little powwow. I, I remember, oh, I think I remember, oh, this is a kind of, do, you, do I remember this right? Um, Mahindra Singh Dhoni bowling in a test match. Yes, and he got Kevin Peterson out. There we go. So, uh, Maybe he should have continued know. doing that then, shouldn't he? He, he, should, he could have done a Darren Stevens. Be like, I'm not going <laughs> to be a wicketkeeper anymore. It's too difficult on the body. I'm going to turn myself into a medium pacer. But, but anyway, Mahindra Singh Dhoni is my choice. Um, there was obviously Harbhajan Singh, Imran Tahir, uh, Max, you took Shahid, Shahid Afridi. Um, there's Pavin Tambe, who uh, at the age of 48 plays in the Caribbean Premier League, or did, did last year. Um, you got Surrey's bowlers in Gareth Batty and Ricky Clark. Uh, and then Nayan Doshi put himself forward in the draft, um, I think this year, and he would have been the oldest player ever selected. And also Amit Mishra, who's playing for the Delhi Capitals. So I think out of those three, Jimmy Anderson, uh, uh, not Jimmy Anderson, Chris Gale, and Mahindra Singh Dodi are a pretty formidable three. three pretty good. Yeah, yeah, right. Do you want to hear our, our final 11 then, boys, before we wrap it up? Yeah, do it. I um, think it sounds like we've probably got something all right here. It's all right. It's a good team. It probably, I think, you know, it's. It, I, I really want to see the guys from this squad still left alive take on the uh, World Test Championship 11 that, that we put together. See what happens. So I think it would be good. We've got Chris Gale opening the batting with Brian Close. So you've got, like, power and defence. The two things that you need. It's like it's like <laughs> Justin Langer and Matt Hayden. In that's the, that's the vibe we're going for there. Uh, we've got Ed Joyce at number three, uh, which I think is probably a good place to put him. Uh, w. G. Grace. I mean, everyone says he was the best cricketer ever. Uh, best player at well, four. we we don't have the best cricketer ever in here though, so it's, you can't you can't take that mantra, old W. G. Grace. Yeah. Okay. Uh, David Steele, the bank clerk who went to war at number five. That's a you know that's a that's a top order that I'd be proud of if I were uh, a supporter of Old Man Eleven. Uh, Darren Stevens, he's batting six. Probably going to bowl a little bit, but yeah, that's he's captain. Absolutely. He can do what he likes. <laughs> he can do what he wants. Yeah, uh, we've got MS Dhoni at seven, Shahid Afridi at eight. That's a good eight. That's the engine room there. Stevens, Dhoni, Afridi. That that's box office. Fifteen sixes from Stevens the other day. Dhoni helicopter shots. Afridi, boom, what, boom. what do you have? Like the second that's... second fastest ODI hundred ever. That's that's at the top. That's that's winning winning a There's a lot of sixes yeah. in this team. This is winning a few IPLs. Uh, Mohammed Shami uh, and Anderson. Um, it has a bit of a tail, bit of a tail. Um, and Asif Kareem who is there if we need a left-arm spinner. Uh, we've, got, we've got two spin options. We've got Swing. We've got Mohamed Shami, who's kind of pretty quick. We've got Darren Stevens nibbling it around. We've already talked about the batting. It's a good, that's a good lineup. Let us know in the oh, comments if David, you like David it. Bill took a couple of wickets as well in his test career. So there we go. Look, this is, this is coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, third spin option in Chris Gale spin from all three ends <laughs> <laughs> lads uh, i think that's the cricket podcast this week i enjoyed old man 11 um mm-hmm. if you've got a suggestion for some dumb ass thing that we can do next week let us know well, Again, once we've got uh once we've got enough 11s perhaps we could put together one of those uh you know those like uh rainy day cricket games uh between our various 11s in some sort of pseudo world cup perhaps if if there's another lockdown, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> if, if there's no cricket ever again. <laughs> maybe just put two pictures up. Here's the old man 11. Here's the World Test Championship 11. Who would win? We'll do a little poll or something. That'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, um, Ross, last messages for our listeners. 
Yep, you should like and subscribe to this video. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, do it, and, and subscribe and follow on whichever podcast platform that you are listening to this on. Um, also, leave comments, have a chat. Like we're, Again, we've not got that much better things to do than to respond to our wonderful listeners and follow us at The Cricket Pod on Instagram and Twitter. That's good. And Patreon. Uh, eight, we're on one eight. Yeah, we're on eight. We'll get to five hundred and one. Um, and we'll also sponsor we'll Woodstock ten. Cricket. So if you want a cricket yes. bat, do that. Yeah, we'll have a good video about Woodstock out later this week. Uh, that's loads of messages. We've got to go. That's too many messages. I hope have a good. Notes. Have a good week. <laughs>